other military installations. But this whole Chinese spy balloon scandal is just so much worse than it seems, and it marks a grave chapter in our new Cold War. A Cold War which could very soon escalate into a full-scale conflict which threatens human civilization. And now that it's been announced by the US government that the balloon may have carried an explosive payload, questions are being asked about the weakness no of the US's slow response. And so what really happened here, and why is this story so important? Well, just a week before the incident occurred, things were looking bleak, but there was still some hope. You see, it all began with Trump's trade war, a series of sanctions and tariffs aimed at gaining the economic upper hand against China. But what was at first an economic conflict soon spread into other areas. For example, China's brutal subjugation of Hong Kong's democracy left a very bitter taste in the West's mouth, as did new information about China's crimes against the Uyghurs. And when China upped their against aggression the against Taiwan, the US responded with threats of intervention and war, with Biden recently announcing that the US would protect Taiwan in the event of invasion and now some US generals are predicting a coming war in as little as two years. And so in a very short span of time, uneasy relations have shifted to a second Cold War, and things are heating up fast. And that's where things were at the beginning of 2023. Okay. But there was still some light at the end of the tunnel. The US Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, was but why do we actually need to go to war though? What's the actual point? What's gonna come out of the the war? Like, what's the point? Who's gonna win? There's no winners. Everybody loses. It's, it's just dumb. It's meant to attend a summit in China to cool relations. He stated that the meeting was the perfect opportunity to establish quote guardrails to prevent tensions from erupting into war. The CCP seemed welcoming of the opportunity to clear the air, with Xi Jinping ready to meet the American Xi delegation Xi over the weekend. And it was hoped that the two nations would soon simmer down this Cold War and skip straight to the peace summits. The meeting was meant to get the ball rolling on a possible de-escalation of both countries. But then just a few days before the planned visit, people in the US suddenly spotted an odd looking object in the sky. Claims that it was a UFO were quickly disproven after the US announced it was in fact a spy balloon, which they had been tracking since it was spotted over Alaska. Estimated flight patterns placed the blame squarely at China's door, and at first they were almost apologetic, although they did insist it was a weather balloon, which had flown off course. And whilst all of this was going on, the balloon just kept on going. First in Montana, it flew over the missile silos and nuclear sites, often fully visible from the ground. One site that the balloon exposed was the Maelstrom Air Force Base, which has around 150 intercontinental missile silos, as well as other... You know why this doesn't make sense? Because... One is a balloon, which is pushed by wind patterns. And two, there's no proof that there were any cameras on there. Because they, sh they blew it up. They shot it down. I mean, like, unless news comes out later, then, then the fact. OMG, Montana ain't useless. True. Um, and, like, why did they just let it happen then? I don't understand. They were like, oh yeah, we're tracking it since it's been over Alaska. But if you knew that they were spying, why did you let them spy for so long? I'm pretty sure they would know, though they tracked it the whole time. Yeah, I mean, like, if... What I'm saying is... What I'm saying is, if they tracked... But, okay, if this is a calculated attack... How did China know where the wind patterns would go so that it would specifically go over those specific areas in order for them to get information? You know what I mean? Which makes no sense. It's like if I put a little camera in a balloon and I send it up, it can go anywhere. Like, you know what I mean? Maybe they somehow control it. I don't know. I was watching the uh, press conference thing earlier. And apparently there were no propulsion systems on there. Unless they they knew at this specific time the wind patterns would do this for the next 30 days. And they're like, we have to launch it at this time, this day, so we can get the best trajectory over everything, then maybe. But how smart are these people actually? Maybe. Vital military installations. And so people were just powerless as they watched the 60 meter tall Goliath cross the skies, hoovering up all of the US's military secrets. And so what did the government do? Well, they did nothing, silently watching the airspace be violated. So what was going on here? Well, first we can establish that this was clearly an intentional move. Balloons navigate by lowering and raising their altitude, letting them take advantage of wind direction to move. And so you see, the balloon had every opportunity to reverse its course, but instead, it flew directly towards the US. So why did China send the balloon in the first place? Well, here's a few possible Interesting. Methods. First is the obvious reason that it could gain valuable intel on the USA's defense capabilities. But beyond that, it was incredibly embarrassing for the US and the Biden administration. 
Every minute that the balloon stayed in the sky proved the US's unreadiness and indecision. It also could have been a demonstration of China's technological dominance. Sleepy draw. The weakness True. Of what was thought to be the most powerful military in the world, surpassing the US's sophisticated defense system with a simple balloon. However, a third and much more sinister motive is that China wanted to sabotage any chance of reconciliation. I mean, why else would they take such a brazen and reckless move against the US? Whilst the US was mulling over these questions, the balloon just kept on going. After floating over Montana, it kept heading southeast over South Dakota and Nebraska. It was next sighted over Kansas, two days after the first sighting. And by now, the balloon had crossed over half of the continental United States. And this was when in the how many days? started flowing in as both of the superpowers established their adversarial positions. And the worst news was yet about to hit. America's Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, cancelled the summit. He also called the spy balloon an irresponsible act on part of China. So Beijing responded by saying that the incident had been hyped up to smear China. The rhetoric was suddenly getting more I believe aggressive. It. But even though the balloon had been gathering data for days, the Biden administration decided not to shoot it down. The reason they claimed was to avoid unnecessary damage. But the fact that it stayed in the sky for so long is an embarrassment on the US government's behalf. The US also claims that they had been tracking it since it was discovered over Alaska. So it was never an issue of time. So as you'd guess, Republicans were quick to launch into attacks on the Biden administration for their inaction. One even called it a catastrophic spectacle. But then the news came out that during the Trump administration, there had been three separate Chinese balloon incidents. Another True. had also entered US airspace before Biden was elected. Not the first Trump time. stated they were never briefed. But perhaps this was just an excuse to shift blame. But regardless of politics, all of this made the US as a country look even more ridiculous. But it does beg the question of why this is the first time we're hearing about this. Does the US usually overlook these spy balloons? Less than Chris cross the country at will? I mean, US officials have stated that the balloon can't get any more intel than the satellite could. But as they haven't analyzed the wreckage, they can't really know this for certain. And if this claim was actually true, why would China send the balloon in the first place? It seems unlikely that the balloon wouldn't give China any new information whatsoever. I don't know, this don't look like a camera though. This don't look like... It kind of, I don't know. What do you think it looks like? I don't think it looks like a camera and it's spyware and it's spying on everyone. Oh, maybe there's cameras in here, but you'd need a pretty big camera from that high to get really good footage. Those are satellites, exactly. Yeah, so... Unless the... Yeah, I don't know. Can satellites catch camera footage, video footage of what's going on i don't know i feel like everyone these people are just blown yes how how can a satellite get footage search it up okay uh listen to conversations The heart of the satellite is an ultra high definition camera that captures high resolution images for any location on Earth. Also films up to two minutes of video at a time pass over each target location. So like in the middle here. Interesting. Weather, even after Only ultra HD, what about 4K? What about 8K? Is that all they can afford? Conducting a full trip over the USA. Weird. There are other less expensive ways of causing a diplomatic incident as well. China could have just cancelled the summit themselves. So obviously, there's much more to what's going on than we could possibly know at this point. It could have been the fact that this was spotted by regular people, causing the whole incident in the first place. And so once people were aware of its existence, the US hand was forced. Regardless, the US went from tolerating these spy balloons to cancelling diplomatic meetings and ramping up tensions, implying that the US government might have wanted an excuse to keep tensions high as well. A divided world could be of some geopolitical benefit. An increased threat from China means that the US is allies are much more likely to let the American military set up their bases, for example. However, the plot thickened when another high altitude balloon was spotted, this time hovering another in one. America. The US announced its presence on Friday, which was confirmed by Colombian officials a day later. China later claimed ownership for this one as well, but said that this one was yet another weather balloon that flew off course. And even with other evidence, it might have been a tiny bit plausible that the US balloon could have simply have been a weather balloon. But now with two having been spotted at the exact same time, it makes the Chinese story just so much more far-fetched. Either China let two massive weather balloons drift off course in a matter of days, and they just happened to float 
straight off towards the Americas, or they're lying. Second balloon, as well as the previous instances that have only just come to light, both show a pattern in China's actions, with these balloons seeming to be a regular occurrence. Neither the US missed them all before, which would be incredibly embarrassing, or they willfully ignored them. But the debates about whether the balloon should be shot down were about to be ended, as on Friday night, the US made their plans to shoot down the balloon once it wasn't above the US mainland. So as the balloon kept heading east, drawing a path from Kansas to South Carolina, it would eventually show up the next morning. By this point, it covered a large portion of the US, making its way from the northwest all the way to the east coast. TikTok news, so actual news. Off the coast of South Carolina that the US TikTok news is full the of balloon. conspiracy the theories, though. Were grounded, an F-22 jet flew up to the balloon's extremely high altitude and brought it down with a missile. The balloon then fell into a shallow section of the coast, where it could be retrieved without major difficulty. China feigned outrage in the statement, calling the US's response an overreaction and described the US as demonstrating indiscriminate use of force. But when true. the US shot down the balloon, they may have played straight into China's hands, as lots of people think the balloon's true purpose was to gain intel on ground installations like the military base we already mentioned. But it may also have been meant to gorge America's response to the balloon itself. Vital data could have been gained and transmitted based on how the balloon was intercepted and what signals were sent by the US jet. But a short time after the balloon was shot down, another new piece of information hit the news. It had already been established that the balloon could have carried a payload similar to a regional commercial aeroplane. Overuse, they have the right, it's their airspace. Uh, yeah, but it's kind of an overreaction. Send a five billion dollar jet to go take down a weather balloon. I'm pretty sure if all the Americans came together and used all their guns that they have, they could have just shot at it together and took it down for free. US General Hell Reporters yeah, brother. Suspected the balloon may have carried enough explosives to self-detonate, destroying any information that could have been gained <laughs> if it was shot down. Although now it seems like they either didn't activate or weren't present in the first place. Once the balloon had been shot down, the US quarantined the debris area in case of any unexploded ordnance, so it was definitely a possibility. The giant Chinese balloon that had been floating across BBC. Parts of the United States has been shot down by an American fighter jet. A few days later, we got our first images of the wreckage as the US started the slow process of recovering it all. And once the remains were analysed, we'll know a lot more about what the balloon's true purpose actually was. Experts in aerospace still don't know what to make either of the official line, saying that the truth probably lies somewhere between the middle of the two narratives. Of course, China will certainly deny any revelations from the US about the nature of the balloon, especially if it doesn't fit in with what was already said. And it's also doubtful that- But the where US are the aliens, man? The information they can take from this the would have been so much cooler if there were actual aliens in there. Technological abilities, it would be incredible be embarrassing to admit but there are some key things that would be revealed if the balloon has any remote control functionality then it would make the incident much worse the aliens are in alaska makes sense about the balloon's inability to navigate plus it would prove a degree of intentionality on their part any component which suggests an ability to send back data to china remotely would also be controversial adding credence to the argument that it was meant for espionage but despite the fact that it's been blown up to bits the balloon is still causing major diplomatic and domestic issues for the u.s <laughs> and will continue to do so for the following years that in biden's state of union address biden was heckled and called a liar by many in American politics, and relations between the US and China have only dramatically degraded in the past few weeks, and shows no signs of improving whatsoever anytime soon. But this may be what China is counting on. The Chinese military modernization programs are set to finish in the next few years, and the country will be somewhat recovered from their COVID problems. Remilitarization and growing hostilities with the West are all part of China's 2049 plan as well, because now that China's become an economic giant and a growing world power, they need to consolidate their regional dominance, and the first target in China's crosshairs will undoubtedly Undoubtedly be Taiwan, but they can't get anywhere without bumping up against the US and the current world order. Their first provocation could be first in a long string of escalations designed to upset this balance of power. It's very similar to an incident that happened in 1960. Well, are you guys aware that it's you know what's always annoying is that they always but have biased news, man. Always biased, bro, because uh, basically, China are building like this railway system uh, through. Uh, where is it? I'm gonna have to get on Google Maps. China are making like this railway system to basically build their companionship to a country around. Where is it? Three DDoS, true. Uh, is it? I think it's Russia. Yes, Russia. So basically, China are making a, um, a railway line that goes from like Moscow uh, and Europe and stuff like that. It goes straight to China. But America intervened 
and they did some dealings with Kazakhstan to basically like stop their plans of making the um making the pipelines and stuff like that so by them interfering they've stopped china from making deals with russia and stuff like that and um eastern europe and nobody's talking about it w usa uh why do you want them to have railroads that path to europe to go in with tanks but why are you trying to criminalize china man what i what okay what i don't understand is what made you think what makes you think that they want to start war what what idea do you have that you think china wants to go uh, into war with everybody in the world well why can't we just go to bed and sleep off here yeah, actually they literally speak they they literally attacking hong kong as we speak uh i don't believe you where's hong kong am i dumb hong kong is in china so you're you're saying they're attacking their own people China attacking Hong Kong. In nineteen forty nine, civil war. Hong Kong is not in China cap hong kong is right here oh what why is this border no shots <laughs> what is this tiny ass border that is cringe no way uh they also want to attack taiwan yeah, but they have, like, long beef, man. Let the fucking... Let them deal with their own shit, man. Like, they, they are Eastern countries. Why are you getting involved? Like, bro, what if China and Russia grouped up with Mexico and they were like, you guys are treating Mexicans really badly. We don't like it. We're going to attack. We're going to group up in Mexico and attack USA for wanting to build a wall treating all these mexicans bad blah 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 bro you guys would be like it's none of your business dude take corner get the guns out blah 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 blah. you get me so why does it actually matter it's the fact that usa are interfering with china and russia and your Euro uh, eastern european like relations and stuff like that and then they get mad when they send over a spy balloon it's like USA move uh, troops into Kazakhstan and made a deal with Kazakhstan to stop China from building railways and pipes into Kazakhstan so they can make uh, deals straight from Moscow um, to Beijing and stuff like that. And it's like, you know what? You guys are f like took over a whole country. We're going to send a weather balloon. You know, it wasn't only USA who did that. It was NATO as a whole. But he, you just said earlier, USA is in charge of NATO. Did you not, young buck? What are you doing? How are you doing, Noah? When a US spy plane was shot down over the USSR, with the things eventually escalating into the Cuban Missile Crisis just two years later. There have been hoped by with the things eventually escalating into the Cuban Missile USF, USA left NATO. What? Bro, you're, you're contradicting. Is USA in NATO? Making USA the founding member of NATO. Belgium, Canada, Denmark, France, Italy, 
Iceland, Luxembourg, Netherlands, Norway, Portugal, United Kingdom, and United States as of 2022. So, there you go. SR crisis just two years later. It had been hoped by the world that we could skip a brush with total annihilation this time around. And unfortunately, history seems to be repeating itself once again. And if we're not careful, the fallout from the balloon could be the first chapter in our new Cold War, a war that the West isn't guaranteed to win. Right, DMs, let's see. Trump discuss, bro, I, I fucking hate this shit. No, man. Uh, they want to put a paywall behind everything. This shit fucking article, man. Okay. Anyway, Trump discussed pulling US from NATO. Aid say amid new concerns over Russia. Why are we talking about NATO? Basically, weather balloon, them shooting it down, overreacting. Bro, it's not that deep, man. It's fucking balloon, man. What is it? Why does it matter? Let's say they sent a weather balloon. It goes up this way, goes over Alaska. You know, they're like, oh shit, it kind of blew out of course. But it had spy stuff in it. How do you know? Did you see it? Did you see it? How do you... All right, let's, let's see what a weather balloon looks like. Weather balloon. I can't spell. What's the difference between a weather balloon and a spy balloon? All right, let's see. They are completely different. Why does it have water bottles in there? Yeah, rain is paid by China. <laughs> True. Unfollowing, blowing up your house. Damn. Okay, yeah, they are different. That's kind of sussy. I don't know, but these are like low budget weather balloons, though. What do actual weather balloons look like? I don't know. Nah, but it's just annoying that there's all you guys always believe what your government tells you rather than listening to both sides. It's like believe all women. You guys just believe all Americans. Anyway, first of all, I'm not a politician. I have my own opinions. Everybody's entitled to their own opinion, correct? I'm glad we're all on the same boat. However, I think it's important to understand that some, uh, sometimes when your people tell you that the other people did a bad thing, maybe you should listen to both sides of the story before you make your assumptions on who's the good guy and who's the bad guy. It's, that's my opinion. I don't think it's fair that we're always pointing the finger on Russia and China, but you don't understand like why they have made that decision and to do that. Like as, <clears throat> like we said, Russia wanted better def defense for their country. Um, <clears throat> and they wanted to put up like um, intelligence, things in china in ukraine and america basically was like you know what fuck you russia we're not gonna let you do this uh we're gonna uh you know get ukraine to sign to nato and russia kind of overreacted they were like yay what you know what we're just gonna blow everything up bro why would somebody believe china when they've consistently been going to trying to go to war with people Bro, okay. Let me reword what you just said. Bro, why would anyone believe America when they've been constantly be trying to go to war with people? Cuba. Afghanistan. Germany. Okay, maybe not Germany. Germany deserved to get smoked. Anyway. Anyway, enough, enough with that conversation. Let's... Move along. Kimi no naka ni aru wa kato wa okisemu.